you were 28, I think, when you made your first NFL start. Yes, sir. Now, Zach Wilson's 21. <laughs> what would you have been like at 21 in the NFL as opposed to 28? <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, you know, and, and I look at Zach Wilson because, you know, Zach Wilson, I guess, played a couple years in college. I, I played one year. Uh, in college when I was on the field playing as a full-time starter. And I realized from the time I was, you know, that age or you know, maybe even a little older when I, when I graduated to the time I came back in the NFL, how much football I learned, uh, you know, how much I grew, how much situational stuff playing arena football and in Europe I got to experience that I hadn't experienced that one year playing ball. Yeah, yeah I played well. Zach Wilson played great, uh, you know, last year. But there's so many things that, that you, you think you have to grow through and you have to understand. And so, you know, these guys are ahead of the game. They do all the seven-on-sevens and they throw the ball a lot more and see a lot more situations. But that, to me, is, is what you look for with a young guy, is how do they handle all these things that are going to be thrown at them? You know, not the least of it is being an NFL starting quarterback in New York and the scrutiny and pressure and expectation that comes with that. So I don't know if I would have been very good when I was 21 years old. I'm, I'm fortunate that I got seasoned a little bit through that time. And when I got to be 28, I was much more mature in who I was as a player and who I was as a person to be able to deal with all the stuff that comes with it. We're talking to Kurt Warner, the Hall of Famer, NFL Network analyst. He was on the call on Westwood One last night with Kevin Harlan. Yeah, trying to understand these quarterbacks. And I know that they grew up in a different era as far as being acclimated to five wide when you're in high school, calling your own plays at the you know, line of scrimmage, private coaches, all of these things. But, you know, Trevor Lawrence is on a team that's not very good, whereas Mac Jones is on a team that I think will be a playoff team. The difference in those two situations is what? The biggest part of that is bad team, quarterback, good team, rookie quarterback. I think the biggest challenge is not feeling like you have to do everything Mm. is if you're in a situation like Mac Jones and you say to yourself, man, we can run the ball or we can scheme guys or our defense. We know Bill Belichick is always going to have a good defense and not allow a bunch of points each and every game. It helps you to settle in and go, okay, I know there's expectations because I was a number one draft pick or the number one overall pick. But I don't have to do everything on my own, and that's going to, you know, implement itself. You're going to see that play out. You know, if you're Trevor Lawrence coming in and you don't have that defense and you're the number one pick and everybody expects you to be, you know, you hear all these things, oh, he's the best prospect since Pete Manning or or, or these things that you hear, and now your team's not very good and you're expected to win and make a difference – I think it's so much easier to start pressing and going, okay, I've got to make every throw. I've got, to, I've got to do everything for this team. I can't ever throw the ball away. I've got to run around and make these special plays to be a difference maker for my team. And oftentimes that can take you in the wrong direction, especially if you're not made up the right way where you're going to go through lumps and you're going to throw a bunch of interceptions because you're trying to do too much. So that's something I'm always watching with every rookie quarterback, but specifically in situations where a guy is drafted that high and the team around him, isn't that good, yet the expectation is for that young man to come in and make an immediate difference no matter who's around him.